how do you trademark the name and logo of your music band? And should you even bother? My name is Andre Menke, I'm the founder of Trademark Factory. And in this video, I'm gonna cover the whys, the whens, the whats, and the hows of trademarking a music band. Get it trademarked with Trademark Factory. So what is there in common between KISS Great White Rat Queen Strike and LA Guns. Talk about love. Talk about love. They all had major trademark fights around their brand names, around their band names with their former members. And that is a great illustration of why you need to properly trademark the name and the logo for your music band. So let me go through this step by step. The first question is why you need to do this. Well, turns out that as the popularity of the band grows, the band name becomes one of the most recognizable parts of the band, sometimes even more than the music. And certainly it becomes the most valuable part of the band because the music you can play, anybody can play the music, but only the band can tour under that band name as long as they properly trademarked the name. So the money, uh, the, the, the money from gigs, which today really in today's world where uh, very, very, very little is paid to musicians in terms of their copyright royalties. They make most of their money doing what? Doing the gigs, doing the tours, right? From the, from the tickets, from live concerts. And in order for you to make that money, you need to make sure that you're the only band that can play the music under the band name, right? And the more popular the band name, the more important it becomes. Well, what do you think uh, is the value of, for example, Metallica, you know, doing their multi-million dollar shows, right? If anybody else could just say, well, we're also Metallica, uh, you know, uh, go see us live, uh, that would severely diminish uh, their economical value of, of the entire corporation that Metallica now is. So, that's why it's so important for you to own the band name. Uh, similarly with logos, uh, logos change. And I mean, it really depends on some, some bands change uh, logos from album to album. Some bands have the same logo from day one till the day they die. Uh, and uh, either way, uh, as long as you have something recognizable, some graphical representation of the band, over the band name, you want to own that as well. Uh, because again, you want to make sure that nobody else can take advantage and a free ride on the fame that you have built. Because today, uh, when you're starting out, it may be less important, but as you grow, as the, your popularity grows, and as you may start facing some disputes with ex members or new members, you want to make sure you know how to control the use of the band name and the logo. Now, the next question is who is going to own that brand? Because that is crucially important because you may start your band, you know, three or four of you, uh, and then years down the road, some members will leave, some members will die and some members will join. And so the question is who actually owns the name, who actually owns the logo. Uh, and this is something that you should consider at the very outset. 
There is no right and wrong answer. It may be the founder is going to own it, maybe a couple of founders, maybe all of them, maybe a corporation behind them, but it needs to be extremely clear for all of the band members what's going to happen with a band name if one of them leaves. Uh, like I said, there is no right answer. Uh, it could be that, let's say, a drummer, you know, starts a band uh, and, uh, you know, he finds the guitarist, the bass player, the, the vocalist, uh, he comes up with a name, they, they do something together, uh, they become popular, and then the drummer decides to kick everyone else out and bring new people, right? Uh, so can the drummer control the name? Maybe as long as when he invites everybody to join the band in the first place, he, he tells them, this is how it's going to be. I own the name. We're going to be in this band. Do you want to be a part of the band to which I own the name? Yes, yes, great. If no, then we have a problem, right? But those are contractual issues that must be resolved early, early on. Uh, the only reason you wouldn't have those discussions is if you think that you will never, ever build something of value, right? Uh, and it's somewhat similar to prenuptial agreements in, you know, in marriage, but it's probably even more valuable and even more important with, with the bands because, you know, marriage is, uh, is, is, is something between two people and it's okay to take risks sometimes. Uh, it's, you know, a lot of family lawyers would uh, advise you to never, you know, get married without a contract. And maybe they're right, but again, it could be a calculated risk, right, on, on the part of either, uh, e e either the, the husband or the wife. But with the music band, uh, it's an economical venture. It's, it's, it's a business venture. It's not just about feelings. It's not just about, uh, you know, what's, what's going to happen uh, when, when you grow old. Uh, it's about why are you being a band? Why do you have a name? Why do you have a logo? Yeah, a big part of it is because it's fun, but if you're hoping to make this your professional career that's gonna make you money, well, you, you gotta make sure that you take care of all the ins and outs and legalities. So make sure you know who owns it. And if it's a corporation, again, make sure you uh, have all the proper documents, all the I's, all the T's, uh, taken care of because you want to make sure that when somebody leaves that corporation, right? And for example, they were shareholder, uh, they're no longer shareholder, uh, that again, you know how to control the use of the name by the leaving shareholders. Very, very, very important. Certainly worth spending some money on a consultation with an attorney who's going to help you design those contracts to make sure that everyone understands what's happening. Right. So the next question is, where do you trademark? Uh, and you want to get it trademarked in all the jurisdictions where you think you've got enough of a market to care about it. So if, if, if uh, uh, you know, and, and it's also a function of your growth, right? The bigger the band, uh, the more countries you want to cover with your trademark registration. So like big acts like, you know, Metallica and uh, you know, I can, I can name a lot more of those, but I don't know why, for whatever reason, Metallic is the one that comes to mind. Uh, they're trademarked in a lot of different countries just because they're so big that the brand is so valuable. If you're just starting out, if you're playing bars, uh, probably you don't need to trademark your brand in, you know, in, in, uh, in um, you know Africa and maybe Asia, right? You you want to start with maybe U.S., Canada, maybe Europe. Again, depending on where you tour, and it, depending on where you think you would tour uh, if you're successful. And uh, there are risks involved, of course. I mean, the the safest bet is to trademark your brand right away everywhere, right? The the problem is most bands don't have the resources to do that. And uh, it could be a waste if you start with uh, a global trademark for a band that nobody's ever heard of. So, but you want to be very paying very close attention to uh, how your music is being adopted, uh, and if people actually give a damn. Uh, and if you see that 
people start loving you and you start getting better and better gigs you're starting to get uh, starting to get better deals that's a good uh, that's a good time to say to yourself okay I think this is working out we got to be sure that we protect it before somebody else takes it away from us right so again you start with your most uh, valuable markets your home country and uh, you know the countries where you think you're gonna sell more tickets so that's what you want to do now when when do you trade market uh, is also a good question somewhat related to what I just covered uh, you want to get a trademark before anybody else steals it from you because what's available today may not be available tomorrow and uh, the last thing you want is uh, have your band name copied by some other band uh, and they go and trademark it and then you instead of writing music instead of doing the shows uh, all you're doing is you're spending time sitting in depositions and in courtrooms and arguing with somebody else over who came up with the name first why uh, they shouldn't have been allowed to trademark it all of that stuff can easily be avoided all you need to do is just file your trademark early on so uh, I wouldn't say you have to do it you know the, the the first day especially if nobody's heard of you so like for example if 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 we are talking about what's called super band right when you got uh celebrity uh musicians from different bands join in a new band that i would trademark before you even announce because uh you already know there will be interest uh, from the public there will be interest from the trolls there will be interest from those who want to take a free ride on the band if we're talking about people that nobody's ever heard of you're just hoping to become known in the music industry uh, you, you don't need to do it on day one but uh, you need to take take care of this as soon as you see that public is interested but even then you have to be very clear as to whether you're picking a name that you can even use and you can potentially own. Uh, and that requires that you do a proper trademark search to see if the name had been trademarked by somebody else already, right? And uh, whether or not you're gonna file your application right away, uh, which again, may be a good idea in your home country, uh, you need to be sure that you're not spending a day building a brand that you can't own. So. Uh, that's that's what trademark searches is for uh, then when you figured all that out so you know the why you know the who uh, you know the when you know the where uh, what would be well the band name uh, and maybe the logo as I mentioned uh, and uh, then the next question is how next question is how uh, and this is probably why you are watching this video because it's titled how do you trademark the band name and the logo so the how is pretty much the same as with any other trademark after you've done your trademark search uh, and made sure that the name is available you draft the trademark application you file the trademark application and then you sit and wait you wait for many months depending on the country it could be as few as two three months to 12 13 months which is uh, now how long it takes in Canada for example US is about three four uh, Canada is about 12 13 14 uh, and then you wait 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 and after you've waited long enough uh, you hear back from the trademarks office uh, if everything's okay uh, which happens in about 30 percent of the cases uh, they'll send you the notice of approval and then it will be uh, published for opposition purposes uh, when anybody can raise their hand and say please don't give this trademark to those people uh, if that doesn't happen then your trademark gets allowed uh, and once it's allowed uh, you go through a few uh, post allowance formalities and then your trademark gets registered but let me take you back to you filing the application waiting 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 and like I said 30% get approved but 70% doesn't don't get approved right away uh, and uh, in 70% of the cases you're going to get what's called an office action when the trademarks office says what they don't like about your trademark application and you have to deal with all those objections uh, and uh, 
if you don't properly deal with those objections, then your application will be refused. And that's the end of your trademarking process, uh, just not the way you want it. Uh, and uh, assuming you've addressed all those objections, there's there could be some back and forth between yourself and the trademarks office. Eventually, it may get allowed, uh, approved, in which case, again, it will be published for opposition purposes. And then very few, very few trademark applications ever get opposed. We call it a an atomic bomb that almost never goes off because it happens in about less than 1% of all trademark applications. Uh, and uh, uh, But when it does happen, it tends to be extremely long, extremely expensive, and extremely difficult. Uh, but if if your brand is worth it, then you, all you do is you do whatever it takes to, to make sure it gets protected. So let's say it doesn't get opposed. Like I said, it will be allowed. If it is opposed, then you have to fight the opposition with the person who raised their hand and asked the trademarks office not to register your trademark. Assuming you survive that, uh, then it gets allowed. If you don't survive that, then again, your application will be uh, refused. And uh, then assuming that it didn't get opposed or it was opposed but you won then it gets allowed and uh, then you go through like i said a few formalities it could be filing a statement of use or paying the registration fee or it could be pretty much automatic uh, you just get your trademark registration certificate and all you need to do from there is just take care of renewals every 10 years or in us there is an additional filing between the fifth and sixth anniversary of your trademark registration so that's kind of the trademark registration process in a nutshell which like i said is the same uh regardless of whether you're trademarking a band name whether you're trademarking a logo or trademarking pretty much anything else the one thing i forgot to mention is which class which class do you go for so when you file your trademark application one of the things you need to specify is not just the trademark itself but also for which products and services do you want it registered? And that's another thing to take care of. Uh, usually it will be class 41, which is entertainment services, right? This is what you do primarily, right? You entertain people, you provide entertainment services, people get to know you under that brand. But there would be other things that you probably want there. Uh, one could be the uh, downloadable music, right? That will be class nine. Uh, that, that could be uh, your swag, right? Your clothing, class 25. That could be, uh, I don't know, maybe you're, you're going to be selling some other things like, you know, bags or, 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 or keychains or some, some, some other stuff. All of those would go into different classes. Uh, and uh, uh, it may be, um, it, 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 may, it may be other things. So one of one of the important decisions that you have to make is what do you want your trademark application to cover? Uh, and like I said, there's always going to be 41 for entertainment. Everything else is icing on the cake. But as your band grows, as your business of the band grows, that's when you want to start thinking, maybe we should file another trademark that would cover other things, maybe tangible stuff. Uh, that that we need to protect to make sure that nobody else takes it away from us. So that is the trademarking process in a nutshell. Uh, in terms of who would do that for you, in theory, you can file your own trademark. You don't need a lawyer um, unless you're not based in the U.S. and you're trying to file a U.S. trademark. They've changed their rules recently. And now if you are a, a, a uh, foreign citizen or foreign company uh, that's outside of the U.S. If you need a U.S. trademark, you need to have a U.S. attorney do that for you. Uh, so the second option is, you know, there's a multitude of those <laughs> websites that will file your trademark for next to nothing, but you usually get what you pay for. Uh, you can also use traditional law firms that take care of uh, trademarks. A uh, problem there, of course, is the is the is the fees, right? Because you're paying them by the hour, the, and, and they don't really have any incentive to spend less hours on your trademark application because they get paid by the hour. Uh, 
uh, or you could use Trademark Factory uh, with us. You get a comprehensive trademark search included in all of our packages. You get one flat fee that covers everything from start to finish. You get 100% money back guarantee if the trademark you ask us to help you do uh, does not get approved. So that's really the trademarking process in a nutshell. If you find this video useful, great. Make sure you comment, make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe to get notified whenever the next video goes live. And if you're a music band and you want to protect it, you want to protect your brand, the brand of your band, uh, then go to trademarkfactory.com and book your free call with our strategy advisors. They'll help you get started. Until then, I will see you in the next video.